Welcome back to the first episode of JT's Barbecue. I'm Justin Whiteley, and today we're making brisket burn-ins. All right, guys, so today we've got this beautiful point of a brisket. As you can see, it almost has the marbling of like a prime. So I picked it up at HEB for about 40 bucks, and we're gonna be turning this bad boy into some uh, burn-ins. So, first thing I like to do when you're trimming on a brisket, pork butt, or anything, if you've had it thawed out, first thing I like to do is go ahead and stick it in the freezer for about 30 minutes, 45 minutes at the most, and that's just going to kind of firm the meat up. It's pretty hard right now. You're going to be able to get that fat and dig anything out you want to dig out a lot easier with your knife. The next thing you're going to need is a good boning knife. This is a, I forget what it's called. Victor Knox. I've actually had this knife a couple years. I bought it because the butcher or bearded butchers on YouTube, they use this knife. A lot of butchers use this knife. It's got a semi stiff blade and it's super good for trimming your meat. All right, so checking this thing out, you can see they've already done quite a bit of a trim job on this thing. So what I'm gonna do is probably just, um, let's see, honestly, the the fat already about a quarter inch. Maybe I'll take a little bit off right here. Just kind of take that down. You want about a quarter inch of fat on a brisket when you smoke it usually. And you want to smoke it fat up. That's how we do it in Texas. But feel free to do it fat side down. Fat side down. Fat cap down. Whatever you call it. And that's looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. Try to nip that little edge off. And there's kind of a lot right here. You also want to try to make it as smooth and aerodynamic as possible. So I'm just going to kind of nip that corner off, round it a little bit. Like that. Just keep working it. Until I've got a nice round corner. I probably should have a cutting board underneath this, huh? Just digging some fat out. Since it's already been trimmed up a little bit, ugh, might as well dig a little bit out. I'm gonna fold that back up. Got a little gas there. Our fat's looking pretty even, nice and smooth, aerodynamic. Now for the meat side, this thing's almost like coming off, but I guess we're gonna cook it together. I don't really see anything that needs to be trimmed here. Everything looks nice and round, nice and uh, aerodynamic besides all this weird stuff right here, but that's gonna be all right. All right guys, so I'm actually gonna transfer this over to an aluminum pan just so I make less of a mess. And today I'm going with something a little different, going with some Frank's Red Hot Sauce as a binder. Usually I use something like olive oil or something, but you know, I'm feeling kind of frisky. So I'm gonna go with the meat side up first cause that's my side I'm gonna put down. And I'm gonna rub it around really good. And honestly, a binder isn't really necessary, but it helps your rub stick. And if you want a really heavy bark, it does help get the seasoning to stick better. So today I'm gonna get it in all those cracks and crevasses, crevasses cracks and crevasses real good and you like hot sauce Avery no. well meat smack so today we're gonna be seasoning up with our brisket blend from JT's barbecue these are the seasonings we make I'll leave a link in the description for these but um it's really pepper heavy not uh, not a lot of sugar or anything like that gonna give you that really good Texas style bark you'll see at the end of this hopefully we can pull it off and I'm gonna get in everywhere too I'm gonna get in the insides I'm gonna get all up in there boy you better believe it smash that down usually smoking a whole brisket you know it's a little bit different than what we're doing today but you definitely want to just get it coated really heavy 
especially if you're using something like this. <clears throat> I tend to not use something with a lot of sugar when I'm working with beef just because you got to smoke it a long time and I don't want it to burn so I use something that doesn't have barely any sugar the least amount of sugar as possible and like I said our rub is mostly salt and pepper so you're not going to get the reason I don't like to use sugary stuff is because you kind of get a premature bark you know it's really just the sugar burning or kind of caramelizing which starts to give you the color but you're not really getting the flavor as much if you go salt and pepper and smoke it a longer time so anyways now this is the bottom side we smoke with the fat cap up here in Texas so this is going to be the presentation side once again I'm going to go with another little binder of the hot sauce just rub that around and this is the side we're going to really work to make it really pretty really even seasoning that way our bark turns out really good looking and I'm not going to worry about making it look too pretty in there but this top side is where I want to make it look really good so a little more binder because I really want it to stick up here spin it around get the corners like I said you can use olive oil or something like that that kind of gets a little more sticky but I saw the Frank's hot sauce in my fridge and thought hey, I got to do it and don't be scared to go heavy you want to be a nice heavy bark never rub in a circular motion just pat pat your seasoning in if you rub it's going to mess up the presentation of it and if you don't care about that i guess you can rub away but i like to uh sprinkle on and then pat kind of press it into the meat really good and like i said i'm going really heavy with this because i want that bark to be the black magic goodness that we all know and love and that should be good All right, guys, so now we're going to just stick that into the smoker. We're running on some oak wood at 275, and we're going to make sure to point the uh, point towards the fire just to protect it a little bit and keep it from burning. All right, guys, so after it has been about three or four hours and that bark is set up, here I am spritzing with a little bit of apple cider vinegar and water mix, about 50-50. Now, another pro tip is don't throw that fat away. On this trim, I didn't really have enough to make tallow, so throw it right on the coals and you'll get more of that flavor, um, like cooking over direct heat, almost like a hamburger flavor. Trust me, you do this with all the fat, it's gonna make a big difference in the flavor. You probably never heard of that one before. All right guys, so once it's probing around 165, 170, we're gonna wrap it up and I'm throwing it in my pit boss at 300 degrees, just because I don't feel like managing a fire anymore. All right, let's check the temp on this bad puppy. Let's see, 205, 206, 207. And it's feeling like butter. Oh man, bruh, that's like tender. All right, we're gonna pull that. Right, let's get a little look, key boys. Ooh, daddy. That's looking good right there, like a rock, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The meteorite. All right, one thing I want you to look for when you're cooking your brisket is for the fat to just turn to butter. Do you see how it's just, my fingers just absolutely, it's like jello, gelatin. It's no longer springy. It's just completely rendered. That's how you know it's done. Now. All right, guys, so I've got some cotton glove liners with some nitrile gloves so I can grab this hot meat. And I'm just going to take it. Set it on this crawfish tray. That's all I got right now. And I'm gonna try to find where these muscles kind of separate. And I'm gonna bust them apart. Wasn't much holding them together there. I'm just gonna kind of trim a little bit of this fat. Get that off there. Just start chunking them up. I'm gonna take these. Make them into some nice little chunks. Pretty big. And uh, it's a barky piece right there. It's a barky boy. All right, I've got to get a little taste of this. Let's try this out. Oh, there you go. Mm. 
turn on these pieces, dude. They have some money, dude. Mm. It's hot. Oh yeah, I have gloves on. <laughs> Wow, it's hot. Yeah, I know. I know what you That's really good. Is it? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to just pour all this into a measuring cup. Make sure you do not throw that away. We'll add a little bit back in here in a minute. But for now, let's see. With all these burn-ins, these are extremely freaking tender. Falling apart. Might as well be roast beef. So now we're going to just drizzle in onto our burnt ends about a half a bottle of some KC Masterpiece, whatever barbecue sauce you like will work. This is just what I had in the fridge, so we're going with it. I'm going to go in with a little bit more of our brisket rub just to season things up a little bit. Just a little more, and I'll toss that all around. I like it just like that lightly sauced when you're making burn-ins you don't want it like drowning in sauce you just want enough sauce to coat them up so they'll get tacky all right now we're going to stick these in the pit boss 300 for about 20 minutes till they tack up let's go all right guys so we've got to try this oh man look at that barkiness all right let's go oh my god dude All right, guys, thank you for watching. If you guys like grilling or barbecuing, I don't know why I'm holding this, this might be the channel for you. So you guys subscribe, like this video. You guys can find the links in the description below to everything we used, the rubs, and uh, my Amazon store for anything else. Appreciate you guys watching. Later.